He is the host of College Game Day on ESPN, and he hosted the national championship pre-post halftime coverage. He is Reese Davis from ESPN here on the Rich Eisen Show. What's up, Reese? Rich, how are you doing this morning, man? I, I am great. First things first, it was really nice of you to lend your Uncle Sam outfit to Bill Walton last night for the Mega Casters. <laughs> I didn't know that he could have it altered that much so that it would, he would stretch it out to the seven-foot frame. That was amazing. Hey, look, I I, I love the Megacast. I, I I absolutely love it. And I, you know, but I'm not hosting it. I mean, I'm wondering, do you, you sit there thinking that that's fewer eyeballs on, on what 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 the game is or what your your studio is or anything like that, Reese? You know, I I don't know. I haven't done the research, Rich, but I sort of think that most people just sort of sample it and move back. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's my guess. Um, that's sort of how I would be. I think if I were sitting at home, I'd probably flip over and check, check it out and then go back to the regular game. I know when I had to do a promo for it during the show last night, Herbie looked at me and said, gee, thanks a lot. You know? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> right. Uh, what so, did, you know, we always want the most eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, I know. Of course. Um, how, what did you think of the game, Reese? I think, Rich, I think it was an absolute classic. I think sometimes when we get a few years removed from a game that we've deemed the greatest of all time, we don't think anything can ever approach it. Um, I'm going to have to think on it a couple more days, but I think it's right there with USC and Texas um, in that vintage Vince Young moment at the end and Deshaun Watson had his. I, I think it's, um, you know, it's certainly one of those two games, the greatest championship games I've ever seen. And I really didn't know – if this year's game could be better than last year's, which was, you know, dramatic and entertaining and had huge swings of emotion and, and last night more than lived up to the billing. Yeah, I mean, there there are some there's some DNA in, in to back up what you just said, where that you know, obviously Deshaun being the first Heisman runner up since Vince Young mm -hmm. to win a national championship game, with Alabama being the first defending champ to lose a national championship game since USC in that game. Oh, do you think that this is a, a a moment for Deshaun Watson similar to uh, Vince Young's in terms of what we view him as for college football? Because I just remember Vince Young being the undisputed best quarterback we've seen in years, and he's going to be drafted high in the NFL. And I don't, I don't feel that for Deshaun Watson for some reason. I, you know what? I think I agree with you. I'm not sure where Deshaun's going to be drafted, but I do think he'll be – successful in the right system he's you know if we don't want to veer off into scout mode but he's of slider build than Vince Young he's certainly a better passer uh but I you know I don't know that it's uh that he's going to get that same type of opportunity in terms of being a high draft choice but just in terms of the history of college football I think he cemented his place as a legend and I think he's going to be with all due respect to Lamar Jackson who is a great player and a worthy Heisman winner. I think Deshaun Watson is going to be one of those guys that we look back and say, you know, he probably should have won a Heisman trophy. And But I, I think he cemented his place as a college football legend last night with that last drive and, and final play. Well, I mean, I mean, Peyton Manning's going to the, uh, into the college right. football Hall of Fame. Marshall Fox going to the college football Hall of Fame. And mm -hmm. Marshall didn't win a, a Heisman. And I, I know Charles Woodson won the year that, that, that Peyton was coming out of, out of Tennessee. So... I mean, we, we've seen all that before. Did mm -hmm. did did Clemson crack a code on the Alabama defense in, in just by merely running as many plays as they did? Ninety nine in the span of a regulation game is a ridiculous number, Reese. That, that's the thing. That's the thing. And I'm not blowing sunshine up your skirt, Rich. That's why you understand you understand football so well and do such a great job. It, everything has to fit together, offense and defense. There's not a defense alive against that type of quarterback and that set of receivers that can run 99 snaps against them and not give up some stuff. Let's think back before we got to, to that number of snaps. And Clemson's goal going into the game was 80. They felt like if they could get to 80 or more, it would be to their advantage because while Alabama is leaner and faster than it was a year ago, they are also not nearly as deep as they were a year ago, and they were also without two starters who were lost uh, during the season to injury. So they were even uh, thinner than normal. So Clemson felt if it could get to that number of plays, they would wear it out. Clemson had, what, seven at halftime, which is 16 below its average. If memory serves, I think they had 14 at the end of third quarter, which is certainly not to par. But then they started making the plays. 
not only because of fatigue, but because their wideouts made spectacular one-on-one plays, and Jordan Leggett as well at tight end. But that, I think that that's exactly right. I don't know if it's just uh, specific to Alabama, but if you can run that many plays on anybody, you're going to pretty much get yours. The failure for Alabama or the success for Clemson, however you want to look at it, in my judgment, was not on the defensive side of the ball, but it was failing to convert on third down. They were 2-15, for 15, couldn't keep their defense off the field, and couldn't keep the clock moving. Reese Davis joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. And Jalen Hurts at this point last year was this – uh, this is, uh, th- something I heard from your broadcast, I couldn't believe it, that he was the scout kid that was mm-hmm. portraying Deshaun Watson to get Alabama ready for last year's title game. And now here he is balling out. And if somehow, some way, Clemson and Deshaun Watson couldn't put it in the end zone, we would be here singing his praises and hosannas for that 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 run, sure. which would have been mm-hmm. for the ages. So I guess it's, I, I, you know, the you know the Alabama program as well as anybody else is that this kid, this kid is set with this program for years to come to be the team to try and knock out maybe year after year. Is that a safe, is that a safe way to put it right now, Reese? What do you think? Absolutely. He's going to be, and it was the reason rich that going into the game that I thought Clemson would win. I still believe, um, you know, with all due respect to them, that only by a hair, I would say full roster. I would think Alabama is probably a better team full roster or whatever. But the most important position in football, and particularly in college football with as many snaps as a run, is at quarterback. And Clemson had a huge advantage at quarterback because Jalen Hurts is going to be great someday, but he's not there yet. Deshaun Watson already was. But your assessment about Hurts and where Alabama goes from here is is right on in my judgment. I mean, Hurts is a a tremendous leader. He's, He's mature well beyond his years. And he is going to develop as a passer because he's got plenty of arm strength. It's just timing, anticipation, recognition, all those things that just come with reps and getting older. So he he showed his moxie last night. It just wasn't quite enough against uh, another great team. I love that you use the word moxie, Reese. See, you got you got some <laughs> Michigan in you right there. I mean, you're you know you're a Michigander. I understand. So so spent a little time spent a little time in Flint. It rubbed off a little bit. I know that. So uh, bottom line is this, though: we now have a body of work, if you will, for this this system that we we've been using. Now we've got a, a, a few years under our belt. What, what what now that you've seen up close about the college football playoff committee in this year, uh, I think they'd, they'd take a mulligan on the other two teams that they put in with Clemson and Alabama right now, maybe. Uh, mm-hmm. Or we, we get a system that spits out the two best teams, doesn't matter. What, 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 what do you make of this system and, 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 and how it's been operating so far now that we've seen it, Reese? I, I enjoy it. I think the appetite for the fans, it, we were ready to expand beyond two. Uh, from what we had in the BCS. And I think the BCS wasn't as bad as people thought. And I won't go into all the reasons there because we're past that. I think the, I, I like the fact that the committee has some subjectivity. And I'm also a very firm believer that performance has very little to do with selection. And it's pretty easy after Ohio State, you know, laid an egg to go back and say, well, you know, this was a flaw in the system. I think it was more a flaw in performance rather than selection. I do think it might be fair to evaluate how we, how we view teams a little bit, maybe scrutinize that a little bit more. Maybe we gave Ohio State too many passes. You know, we explained away Indiana and explained away Northwestern, you know, and, and maybe did some of that. But I didn't I, – I still, Rich, I mean, and I know people will disagree, but if we went back and selected the four teams, I wouldn't change the four. I thought they, I, those were the four teams who should be in the playoff to me. At least that's what I thought above, uh, above Penn State or USC or, or Michigan. You have to – to me, you mix best and most deserving. Probably at the end we would say that Michigan was probably the best, but they just left such a gap in the resume when it came to the most deserving – component in terms of uh, you know finishing a game behind in the division losing the game to Ohio State the loss at Iowa but at the end uh, you know they were probably one of the best I just feel like if they didn't check enough boxes in the most deserving part of the equation all right before we let Reese go uh, Chris Brockman let's unpack our poll question we weren't able to get to do it in the first segment because Aaron Rodgers was kind enough to call in then uh, uh, roll it out on the Rich Eisen show app that folks can vote on all right, Reese, which championship game was the best? 
NCAA men's title, Villanova game-winning shot, NBA Finals Game 7, Kyrie Irving game-winning shot, World Series Game 7, Cubs extra inning walk-off win, last night's national championship game. What do you think? Wow, hell of a year, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I'll, uh, you know what? Because I think because, and this will expose some bias, I'm going to say the championship game last night. Uh, I mean, I, I love college football. I love the other ones, too, uh, particularly college basketball. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with last night just because of the dramatic swings in the fourth quarter and the champion rescuing itself from off the deck after they let it get away and then, and then Clemson coming back and answering with uh, – you know, a Hollywood-esque moment. I'll go with the uh, with the college football game last night. Yeah, time. but I, I, that was your your first blush reaction was ours too, and we just were spitballing this before the show. I mean, think about it: the college basketball season ended with a buzzer beater, and the college football season almost did too with that extra second. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and yeah. and 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 I guess the last thing for you, Reese, is uh, the ref last night, Mike Defee. Um, <laughs> him versus Hockley in the uh, in the gun show match. Who do you think wins uh, that one, Reese? I'm going to go hockey because I think the the overall body of work, pun definitely intended, is a little bit better. I mean, mm. there's too many curls for the girls for defeat <laughs> and not enough not enough complete total body workout. Mm -hmm. I would say. And, you know, I heard what you were saying earlier, Rich, mm -hmm. too, and the, the pick play didn't didn't lose the game or anything, but uh, those Big 12 officials, that's that's just Tuesday for them. I mean, they, they see that stuff all the time in the Big 12. They don't call it. You know, it's uh, you're exactly right. They're not going to call it. Keep running. All right, Reese. Thanks for calling in, as always. Let's chat down the line in short order. Uh, sounds good, guys. See you bet. Later. There's Reese Davis at ESPN underscore Reese Davis. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.